Sierra Leone's economy, which in the past was battered by a civil war, is back on track and a quiet revolution seems to be unfolding in the science and technology sector. We are now being joined on the morning show by Salima Ba, who is Sierra Leone's Minister of Communications, Technology and Innovation. Ms. Ba Mande includes leading the government's digital transformation agenda and the country's digital economy and innovation, entrepreneurship, strategic development. And our focus, amongst other things, shall be on the role of the ministry she superintends in job creation, community building, and education. It is so good to have you on this morning show this morning, Ms. Ba. Welcome. And welcome to Nigeria. Um, thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much and good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So you resumed office as the Minister of Communication, Technology and Innovation in September of last year. So let us know what has the journey been like so far and what are your personal objectives in accepting this role and what should we see from you in terms of Nigerians also? Are you reaching out to us in Nigeria? Um, absolutely. So actually we resumed office in July and it's been a really um, up, not up and down, but it's been an interesting journey because um, the Ministry of Communication, Tech and Innovation is actually a new establishment. So a lot of the work within the first six months have gone towards um, setting up the institution, setting up a structure, which could be challenging. It, it has its pros and cons um, because of, I say this to say that I feel as if sometimes I'm starting um, behind um, the starting line compared to other ministries who came in on day one and they had a structure in place. But actually, I also see the benefits of it because I get to kind of influence um, what the design and that structure looks like. So um, that's been an interesting journey in of itself. Um, and definitely uh, part of the plan is really um, the focus is really how we can support and really kickstart um, the civil union tech um, um, ecosystem um, with the hopes of, uh, of creating a pipeline um, from ideation to commercialization as well as creating um, digital jobs, um, digital jobs. So, and that kind of leads to my um, journey or my trip to Nigeria really is about um, one putting um, Sierra Leone on the map in terms of when it comes to the global tech um, industry because if we're speaking about that and we speak about the contribution of Africa I think um, Nigeria plays a significant role in that so that was really important for me but then also part of the trip is really to um, bring the message that Sierra Leone is an open market um, to invite um, private tech companies that are in Nigeria to come to Sierra Leone and see it as a viable option in terms of expanding their market. All right, uh, Honorable Minister, thanks you know, for joining us on the morning show. Um, <clears throat> at 32, you are uh, the youngest in the cabinet of uh, Sierra Leone, cabinet of President Bill. Uh, I'd like you to take us through uh, how this is a new thing, how this impacts uh, the young generation in Sierra Leone. Uh, being a lawyer, being, you know, at 32, uh, I, I know that you have spent four years at the precursor to the ministry, uh, which is the Directorate, I believe, of Science and Innovation, where you work for four years. Uh, tell us um, uh, how this new role as a minister is different from what you have done for four years before now, and then what in precise terms uh, will you be doing with Nigeria in terms of collaboration? Uh, our Minister for uh, uh, Technology uh, uh, Communications here uh, is also one of the, the youngest, you know, and he came uh, from the Tech Hub Private Sector Initiative. I'm sure you will, uh, you must have met uh, with him, Boson Tijani, if you have, uh, tell us the sort of experience that you have shared with him and uh, how will working with Nigeria be different with what you have with Kazakhstan, uh, which I believe that you have already signed an MOU with. Uh, thank you. Um, definitely um, the experience of um, being um, 
32 and one of the youngest, well, the youngest in Sierra Leone cabinet, but I also believe one of the youngest around the region, um, has been an amazing journey because um, not many 32 or 33 year olds get to be called to serve their country in that way. So it's been the absolute honor um, of my life and my family as well. Um, but the significant difference in terms of what I did four years ago versus what I'm doing now is really being at the leadership position. Um, a lot of the work that I'm currently doing is work we had already started and I was leading on as a director um, at that directorate, but um, the president believed that because of the successes that we had um, during his first time, that there was a need to scale up the mandate to a ministerial role. And um, he, it's pleased him to appoint me um, to lead his vision that he has for technology in Sierra Leone. Um, so most of the work is around that and also working with our chief innovation officer actually who's still who's currently the chief minister but also wears the hat as a chief innovation innovation officer um for sierra leone um but i also want to say the the young revolution in sierra leone in terms of the cabinet appointment doesn't stop with me actually um this has been it has been a significant movement um by His Excellency the President in intentionally appointing young people in very key positions within the government. Um, within the cabinet, actually, 60% of his cabinet ministers are under 40 years old. And actually, we have a 40.2% female representation at the cabinet. The chief minister, for example, is also um, under 35. So um, the president has made a significant um, uh, decision, um, as he says it, um, um, this is a democracy and the young people are the majority, so he believes that means the young people must lead. Um, so, uh, and we believe by doing that we are also, um, I think we'll be, we're an example to, um, for a lot of uh, countries across the region and we know um, we have um, the eyes of the region on us um, to deliver. Um, and, and I think, um, similar to what you said, the Nigerian um, um, Honorable Minister Busun um, is also, you could say, part of that um, revolution from Nigeria. And we've actually definitely been in contact. Um, we actually met at the UN General Assembly and we've been in close contra contact. And I've actually been at um, his hub yesterday. Um, I, um, we were communicating and he made sure I was able to go visit the hub. And, and I think that's um, a testament because I do think within the ICT African ministers, I think we have a, I think it's one of the sectors where you have a lot of young representation actually across the region and a fair number of us are in close contact. And I think maybe that's one of the things which you say on, um, maybe, I don't know how much of that used to happen before, but we have our close WhatsApp groups where we communicate, we share ideas, um, we're able to call up on each other um, for advice um, and to discuss, uh, just brainstorm maybe challenges that we have. And uh, lots of interesting conversations about how we believe um, we can achieve a lot more into, um, if we collaborate together and we're definitely making strides um, to do that. Um, so that has been um, really interesting and I'm really thankful um, for partnerships such as that. And definitely that's where, and again, hence my visit to Nigeria really is to um, st further strengthen those um, relationships and those conversations. Thank you. So we've seen that you had an MOU that you signed with Kenya, I believe. So should we expect something similar coming out of your trip to Nigeria? Um, absolutely. Um, I believe we're meant to meet um, for the MWC in Barcelona in a couple of weeks. And we'll definitely um, be discussing um, some of those. But I also want to say, even beyond actually getting an MOU, you've actually started um, doing the work in terms of um, collaboration. But uh, we know in terms of just formalizing some of those areas that we want to collaborate, we'll definitely look to see how we um, 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 formalize that. Um, but um, the work in terms of collaborating together um, has already started. Um, Nigeria and Sierra Leone have a long history of partnership and being allies. So um, in terms of digital cooperation, um, that would not be different.
All right. Uh, talk to us about your impression of the co-creation hub, which uh, you said that you have visited, and then you use that to also um, uh, tell us uh, more uh, about the Tech City project, the T-Coco, I believe you call it in Sierra Leone, uh, for which you've gotten uh, a large expanse of land outside of Freetown. Uh, what, what is it all about? When will it be ready? And how will your experience at the co-creation hub uh, impact on that tea cocoa project? Um, yeah, so the visit to the hub was amazing in terms of talking to the team around what the journey has been actually. I think that was one of the most interesting things for me. Um, they took us through the journey from when the hub was founded um, by Honorable Minister Bosun and his um, partners to, the, to what it is now and what has been the significant contributing factors to the success that it, it has had. Um, and really, that, that was really, and I've also been to a couple of other hubs um, in and around um, in Lagos and in Abuja as well, just to see what, um, I think Nigeria has made um, significant strides um, within that in terms of looking at the success that has come out of those hubs. So I've made a couple of visits in and around just to see the different iterations of what these hubs look like. Um, um, so ha that's been super useful for me and, and, and I specifically because we are on this journey in terms of setting up our own um, tech and innovation hub in or well, we call it a tech innovation city um, in Sierra Leone um, that would be a special economic zone to support and kickstart the tech ecosystem. And with visiting these hubs in Nigeria, a big part of that is to learn um, what they have been able to do, um, the different things that they've been able to do and the success that they've been able to have. Um, it's not going to be about replicating those exact models um, in Sierra Leone. We're going to take bits and pieces um, that would then fit into our own larger strategy that we have um, in terms of one promoting or creating infrastructure that would promote um, uh, skills to jobs, digital skills to job pipeline. Um, because in Sierra Leone, we know looking at the size of our economy, we know then that means we have to be more outward looking and more outward focused. So um, in terms of digital skills, so that's kind of where we want to position ourselves. We're also definitely keen on acceleration. So how can we really create this pipeline from ideation to commercialization for our tech innovators um, in Sierra Leone and really supporting that investment into their ideas. But then most importantly also for us is that zone would where we would look to create a conducive ecosystem to attract foreign tech um, um, investors um, within the region and also outside of it. Thank you so much, Ms. Barr, for joining us today on The Morning Show. And we're looking forward to more relationships between Sierra Leone and Nigeria and our tech growing and growing. And it's so lovely to see a young person in powerful positions. Thank you so much for joining us today.